am going to go ahead and plant my roses. So they require bone meal, the special bone meal, and they also require fish fertilizer every few weeks. So I'm going to go ahead and repot them. I'll show you the ones I got. I got them from Heirloom Roses. Then one is a climbing rose and the other one is a container rose. They're both going to go in containers. They're still wrapped up. This is just one gallon. See how small it is. There is some growth. As you can see, there is, they look healthy, but they defoliate them so that they come healthier and it does stimulate their growth. It's been probably about a week. I should have done this sooner, but time is of the essence. So those are two. Um, this one is the um, Bomica, which is like um, a pink rose, container rose. And then this one is, oh, antique. So that's a climbing rose here. So I'm gonna put it up against this trellis here. And then this is gardenia called Chuck Hayes. I've never had this one before, so yeah, that's what that will be new. And this little plant here is, is neither. This was given to me. Um, it's a Mexican flame vine. They attract butterflies, the monarchs. That's not being replanted, but that's going to be viney too. So I'm not sure where that's going to So I'm going to go ahead and pot it in this is really pretty pot. Um, it's kind of like this copper antique. It looks heavy, but it's plastic. I got this at Home Depot. It's just cute. I got, that. I got two of them for the roses. So I'm going to fill this pot up with soil. We have drain holes. Yes, that's very important, by the way. So the Bovica roses, this rose is much more established. It's also um, a very sturdy rose and easier to grow. You can see it's already growing. It's just, it looks just so much more established. So I think I'm gonna have better luck with this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant these Bovicas. Here it is, if you wanna see it. I'm gonna go ahead and mulch now so I don't have to weed. I hate weeding, it's not how I wanna spend my gardening time. So I'm gonna go ahead and mulch that. It also looks pretty when there's no weeds in the container. <laughs> I got this at Home Depot. I didn't know she had a rose, but it's beautiful color, but it smells phenomenal. So I love the fragrance. Um, that's one of my favorite things about roses is the fragrance. OMG, look at that. How pretty is that? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and plant that. Well, this is, gets full light or a full morning sun right next to these the blue hibiscus it's gonna look gorgeous
For those of you who don't know, I raise monarch butterflies. These are the caterpillars that will eventually turn into monarch butterflies. Monarch butterflies lay their eggs on milkweed. This is the host plant for the monarch caterpillars. The caterpillars ate all the milkweed. Look, there's one, two, three, four right there. There's seven of them. And they ate that plant. So they went and got more. More milkweed inside the habitat. So now they have lots of milkweed and they're safe. It's been about two weeks and I have two chrysalis as you can see. When a caterpillar is ready to pupate, it will crawl to the top of the habitat and hang from there in a J. It might also hang off a branch as well. It will molt for the last time and its chrysalis will be revealed. A butterfly emerged this morning. As you can see, the wings are folded over and wet. The butterfly will pump lymph fluid from the abdomen throughout the wings. This will help the wings harden and prepare for flight. The most rewarding part of this process is releasing the monarch butterflies into the world.